As Michael said, I'm Amy. I'm the Legal Deposit Librarian at the National Library. I have the kind of job that when someone asks you what you do and you say what your job title is, you always have to follow it up with a little paragraph of explanation about what a legal deposit librarian is. They usually think it's got something to do with legal documents, maybe. Um, I get that a bit less here, but when I talk to people about the projects that they're talking about here and say, have you considered your legal deposit requirements, I usually get that same sort of blank stare. So this is a talk I've been wanting to do for a couple of years now. Um, so. I think this is probably a description of quite a lot of people in this room. You have a passion for New Zealand's documentary heritage. You have limited resources to try and do some cool stuff with that documentary heritage. And the content that you select to collect or digitise and provide access to is Taonga. Uh, but there are currently far fewer organisations that have the technical and operational capacity to ensure long-term preservation of their digital assets than of our physical collections, which we're by and large pretty good at. Uh, digital preservation over time is about more than just backing files up. Um, if you've gone to the trouble of curating and creating digital heritage materials, then you probably care about their long-term security and about access for future generations. And so do we at the National Library. In fact, our purpose is to enrich the cultural and economic life of New Zealand and its interchanges with other nations by collecting, preserving and protecting documents, making them accessible, and supplementing and furthering the work of other libraries in New Zealand, working collaboratively with other institutions, having similar purposes. And that is uh, quite neatly all the threads that come through, I think, in this lightning talk. So we want to work with you to ensure that your content is preserved and made accessible over time. And we hope that you want that for your content too. So. Uh, the title of this talk is Carrots and Sticks, and our long-term preservation capability is the carrot that we're hoping to lure you in with um, when we want to preserve your content under legal deposit. Um, this is an image I came across when I was searching for carrots in our collection. Uh, I quite like it because it's got a kind of random Bugs Bunny plot to it. We're trying to lure you in with some crisp veggies and a, a rather uh, fetching pair of legs there. Um, on the other hand, uh, one of the primary ways in which we collect documents to preserve and protect in both print and electronic is via the legal deposit mandate, which is part of the National Library of New Zealand Act. It empowers us to collect the publications being created by New Zealanders. In the print world, this is for a very long time, meant that publishers have a requirement to supply two copies of their publications to us. Uh, the numbers have varied over the year, it's current, uh, years, it's currently two copies, uh, usually by posting them or couriering them to us in Wellington. In the digital world, the uh, kind of first uh, line of command is the National Libra Librarian is authorised to copy any internet document. Uh, not all digital documents are something we can just go out and copy. Uh, so the backup line of defence is if we make a written request for assistance, then publishers have to comply to help us to store and use an identical copy of the document. So many of you are publishers of repositories of documents that are either digitised or born digital, and under the law we're entitled to make copies of these in order to collect, preserve, protect and make them accessible. And if we ask you to, you do have an obligation to help us do this. It's the law, and if you like to think about this metaphor, this, this is our stick. And this is why this talk, um, I think, has come up this year in particular. Some of you may know that we've had our, our draft collections policy revision out for feedback this year. Uh, we're pretty close to a final version that we're working on to adopt now. Um, but some form of this principle should be in it. So this was what the original draft was. Digitised resources, including those digitised by New Zealand libraries or other institutions, and born digital resources in New Zealand research repositories, which are made available to the public on the internet are considered public documents for legal deposit and may be collected. That principle may not be drafted with reading it out uh, aloud in mind. 
Um, so let me reiterate a couple of points here. This stuff is already in scope under the Act. We're not uh, helping ourselves to any new permissions. Um, and we could be already asking you to provide assistance in collecting it um, and making it available ourselves under the access provisions in the Act. Um, and that does say that if publishers are making their content openly available online, uh, then we can make our preserved copies openly available too. Um, so this principle is just making it explicit for the point of avoiding confusion and that blank look we sometimes get at things like this, um, that this kind of content is in scope and it may be collected. And that's the second thing I want to reiterate is that word may. Um, we will make legal deposit collecting decisions based on the rest of our collecting policy. Um, but if we ask you for your assistance, you do need to provide it to us. But we do want to be a good citizen in the sector. We want to supplement the good work that you're already doing and not just take your content and make it available ourselves. Um, so the feedback that we have received on this principle is broadly positive, but you've had some concerns. Um, they're generally things that we've agreed are valid and have kind of come up in internal discussion already. Um, and they might require some new models of treating legal deposit content, which is the point of coming here to talk to you. So, I suspect that uh, the people running these projects would really prefer that once you've got your beautiful content out there in the world that people are coming to you to access it for a few different reasons. So you might really care about knowing how your content is accessed and being used and if there's other copies out there in the world where people are accessing them and kind of bypassing you then that could really play havoc with your reporting which could have implications for uh, funding and decisions about future projects. Um, so for example, don't know how well you can see this, um, but this is a screenshot from the University of Canterbury Research Repository and one of the things they allow you to do is to search the repository by uh, most uh, common, um, you know, um, most used authors or most used publications. Um, so if we're off to the side um, providing access to content, then we can be skewing those sorts of results. Um, Version control, you might want to be confident that users are accessing your best, your most current versions that you want them to be accessing and managing that through what you provide on your site. Um, and access platforms, you might have made a really nice, really well crafted to your particular project platform um, and you want to make sure that people are accessing your content through that to get the best experience for that material. Uh, the Marsden Online Archive, which was presented at NDF last year, is a really good example of that. Um, we don't currently have the systems in place that would allow us to provide that sort of experience with our preserved copies. So, those possible new models, a simple one might just be that yes, you provide it to us, we make it freely available, but we come up with ways to report back some analytics to you so you know how people are accessing content through us. Uh, we might introduce the concept of the dark archive so that we do collect it and make sure it's preserved in our preservation system, but we direct users to your live site and only open access to our preservation copies if the originals are no longer available. We might introduce some system of light memoranda of understanding where you would be obliged to alert us if you were no longer confident um, you can manage your own content locally so we could arrange to take copies and make those available ourselves. And there may be other things that we haven't thought of that you think would be a good approach to legal deposit for these projects. So talk to us, let's have a conversation about this. I'm really open to people coming to talk to me over the course of the rest of the conference. Uh, you can email legaldeposit at dia.govt.nz um, and if you do want to make electronic contact with me during conference, your best bet might be to tweet at me because I might not be in my work inbox all that much. Um, so do feel free to flick me a tweet or a direct message um, and we can arrange to meet up and have a chat. And we look forward to talking to you and making this a, a dialogue within the sector. So thank you.